Hello, this is Frey, and welcome to my channel and the extreme one chunk Iron Man account that I'm starting in Cannabis called Cannabis Chunk. So, we've managed to find ourselves a flinching spot on Boris here. One of these bad boys will set you back a cool 125 GP. Getting a silver bar was impossible. Oh my god, 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 we just got it right. I need to shut this in there. Open it up. Oh my god. Okay. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. I'm oh my god. We got it. 8,092 kill count. Wait, I've not picked it up yet. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my fucking god. Oh my fucking god. We got it. Hello and welcome to what is the one year anniversary of Cannabis Chunk. Episode 1 was released on July 17th, 2023. And I just wanted to say a massive thank you to all of you for allowing me to make it all the way to episode 30. To. If you are not subscribed already, please do so, as the video coming up today and the videos coming in the next few months are bangers and you won't want to miss any of them. Laren's keys have officially been removed from the zombie pirate drop table and what that means is that we can celebrate the anniversary of the account with a chunk roll today. Wish me luck. Okay, so there are 50 seconds left on the timer for the system update, and on the blog post, it resolutely says, let me just read out what it says word for word, removed Laren's keys from the zombie pirates loot table and slightly increased the average quantity of cannibals, Laren's keys can still be obtained whilst on a zombie or pirate slayer task, of which I cannot get. So Laren's keys in 22 seconds will no longer exist as far as I'm concerned. Um, which means our 95 fletching goal has been nuked and with the visage and the pet obtained, we're now free to roll a chunk. So uh, we'll see you after the system update. The Revenant Caves are terribly exciting. However, when I'm settling down to AFK Fletching in the evenings, I like to do it alongside today's sponsor, Pocket Champs. Pocket Champs is a free-to-download game on iOS and Android where you train your character to run, climb, swim, and even fly for upcoming races. This isn't just a racing game, however, with a strategy playing a major part through world analysis and gadget selection. Like any trainer, you have to trust your champion, so lay back and watch them race while deep into an AFK old school and escape grind. Pocket Champs' first ever community event is now live as of the 11th of July. The Community Rush event allows players to play together and unlock rewards as a team, and every participant is entered into a giveaway for a surprise gift. As someone with young kids, I spend a lot of my time looking at cartoon characters, and Pocket Champs did a fantastic job on making these ones as cute and memorable as any other. Much like Old School Runescape, I like how the game is updated every single month so things are kept fresh and interesting, and the races are automatic and low effort, so really are perfect to play alongside those Old School Runescape grinds. So join me today in downloading Pocket Champs. The first 50 people to download and play Pocket Champs using my link will be added to my friends list, and everyone will receive 500 gems plus an awesome skin. Make sure to click the link again once you've downloaded the game to be added to the friends list. These rewards are only available for July and will be added on August 1st. They're worth $15, so you may as well give it a try. So make sure to click my link in the description or scan the QR code on screen to join me. So I had like a half an hour clip that I was like going through every single chunk one by one, but I feel like I watched it back and I was like, bloody hell, this is boring. Um, so what I'm doing is just, I'll give you just a quick rundown of what we've got basically. So there is one farming chunk that I really don't want to get. There are eight smithing chunks on this grind. So basically eight chunks where 99 smithing and 90 mining become a requirement instantly due to the rune bars that we've got from the revenants there are three of those 99 smithing chunks that i would consider death chunks because they are 99 smithing 
plus something else. So one of those is the monastery, which is 99 smithing plus 99 prayer. One of them is the dig site, which is 99 smithing plus 85 fishing via terrible methods. And the other one is Lumbridge, which is 99 smithing plus 99 which kind and 99 defense. Um, there are also three hunter grinds, two of which are pure puro, one of which is not. Um, and I think that is the majority of the stuff that we're looking to avoid uh maybe 99 cooking as well is one that we might want to avoid but that wouldn't be that bad the rest of the chunks are either nothing there's about four nothing chunks on there or bosses which are you know venom artists or crazy archaeologist or something like that something fairly acceptable uh like barrows as well um and then the rest of them are just kind of small ish kind of grinds that wouldn't take very long so yeah basically there's eight smithing chunks that we would like to avoid for as long as possible three hunter grinds that we'd also like to avoid for as long as possible and one farming grind and one cooking grind that we would also like to avoid in a perfect scenario barrows or venonatus right wish me luck everyone <sighs> Need to mark that chunk as complete. All the tasks are now done. 30 out of 30. Oh. So, three, two, one. Let's go. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Oh. Okay, right. Goblin Village, what is that? Okay. Is that anything? That definitely puts us closer to herb lore, which is interesting. Oh, it is as I as I suspected. It is a no task chunk. Oh god, there is some interesting stuff there though. Why is that? Like, can I just not get into Goblin Village? Is that why Goblin Diplomacy is not not rolling? That's really interesting. Okay, right. Let's. Uh, so what I'm going to do is fix the chunk pickup first. By just doing these numbers, so I can't go west, or can I? Can I go? Yeah, I can go west, right? Because that's Chaos Temple, and I can walk into Chaos Temple, right? Would you say that's fair that I can roll into Chaos Chum uh, Chaos Temple there? So let's just bomb our way over to the chunk that we've just unlocked. It's very far west, isn't it? Uh, let's just head over this way. So this is the chunk that we have unlocked just to the south here. Uh, it's the mind altar chunk, which may be relevant to us. Uh, not that we have a rune crafting requirement at the moment, but that is interesting. Uh, we can can okay. So can we get over to this western chunk? Basically, oh, it looks like maybe. Right? Can some can someone of you guys just run into that chunk? Yes. Okay. So we can roll into here and get these monks of Zamorak and the, uh, and the wine of Zami spawn. Maybe that'll be relevant for us in the future. I mean, it would be relevant because I would unlock one of the chunks needed for Herblore. So essentially, I would only need two more chunks to get Herblore from there, which is one, two. In fact, I wouldn't even need two. Oh my god, would I not even need two? Because I could technically squeeze through this gap here. Oh my god. So we're what? Like, yeah, basically two chunks away from rolling Herblore. That would be wild. Can you imagine if we unlock Herblore? That would be nuts. Um, okay, so we've got the Mind Altar over here. Uh, we've got a couple goblins, black bears. This is a quest location, right? I can't remember what the quest is for this, but it's certainly a quest. Uh, we've got the... Camdoz is this the Camdozel vault over here? We also have like up to the door <laughs> of Black Knight's Fortress. Oh, and all the stuff over here that we've not been able to access before. That's pretty cool. Um, we've got a new music track, Alone. First one of those we've unlocked in a little while. Uh, I guess I could probably technically range Ice Fiends from here as well. Which may be relevant, maybe for Slayer or something like that. Um, oh, it might not even need to range them. I might just be able to climb up here. What do we think the uh, agility level on this shortcut is? We can certainly climb up onto Ice Mountain. Uh, yeah, I'm recording still. Okay, right. 
Let's go. Three, two, one. Ooh. Okay, that right. This chunk may bring up that it says it might say ninety mining, ninety nine smithing, but I can only access like the tiniest part of this chunk. Uh, so it may bring it up, but sections will say that I can't get to it. Okay, it doesn't even bring it up. Okay, right there we go. Ah, oh, right. Okay, let's uh, let's head back over to the other scene and head over there. Why not? And here is everyone to greet me at the chunk. So, the chunk that we have... Ru what is being dropped? <laughs> oh no, there's a bronze pickaxe spawn I missed in the corner of this chunk. How on earth did I miss that? The chunk that we have rolled is this one, just to the east of us. It is basically nothing until we get access to Berg de Rot, but... We can technically walk <laughs> into this tiny little corner. Please tell me if that's... Imagine if that small fishing net was real. I actually thought for a second it might have been. Oh, people trolling me. People trolling me. Okay, so there is the massive content. Nothing that we can do in there. I guess we can technically walk into this little, little, little piece as well. Uh, but basically, a nothing chunk. And we will go back to the chunk picker and pick... A new one. And we are back in the chunk picker. Oh god, right. So we don't unlock any new chunks from that one because we can't get south here, we can't get east here. So that is basically just a chunk roll taken off. Barrows is still number four, but everything else has moved uh one lower. So we're back to 30 chunks. I can't believe we've missed barrows. As if we rolled this and not barrows, that's so infuriating. But we're on two chunks in this little stint. There was about two of 30 chunk. Well, there's about four of 30 chunks that were nothing rolls. Um, so it was very weird that we rolled two of those. I'm very much expecting to hit something grim. As you can see, there are a lot of 99s and death chunks and such littered throughout this. So I'm very much expecting something like that next. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's just do it. Right, wish me luck. Wish me luck. 52 chunks unlocked. I think Limpwort has like 56. So we're getting close to being equal with the most the most chunks, but I do not think we will get four more without something terrible. So uh yeah. Let's just pick it and go. Oh no, I think that's pure pure. No! No, that is just not what we want. Oh no, please tell me that's not Puro Puro. Oh dear God. Oh, that's not ideal. That is not ideal. 89 Hunter, 95 Fletching, 95 Cooking. So it looks like we have to get the 95 Fletching anyway. Um, That is not ideal. That is not ideal. But do you know what? Do you know what? It could... It could be worse. So... This isn't actually the end of the world. So, Pura Puro is rough. It is, very, it is rough. There's no getting away from actually doing Pura Puro is going to be a bit grim. Um, oh, the only reason I can do it is because I've got that jelly shortcut as well. I can't even get into it from down here. Um, right, so that is a bit rough. But there are benefits to getting Pura Puro, which is I'm going to get more planks. I'm going to get access to medium clues, which I think will be quite interesting. Um, I'm going to get access to some, be some best in slot gear, to be fair. Rune chain body, uh, van races, snakeskin boots, mystic boots. So they're all upgrades for us. Um, I do need to get 95 cooking, which is a bit rough. But I do think that I get access... Do I get... I think I get access to a, like, a chef's delight, as it's called. I think, from getting Pure Pure. So I think I only actually need to get 90 cooking and not 95. Um, so that's not the end of the world. What is this diary task? Catch an essence in playing. Okay. And uh, so we, it's, to be fair, we've got a relatively large amount of medium clue steps, which is quite interesting. Um, 
so that will result in us being able to probably get some like some decent stuff from medium clues could have been edgeville one away from edgeville oh that's so unlucky right catch a lucky impling fletcher dragon dart make a summer pie do you know what it isn't that bad like that is going to take a lot of hours realistically but it's not too bad it's really not too bad bearing in mind all of these death chunks all of these mining and smithing ones also give us 1500 total and once i get 1500 total i'll be doing last man standing luckily this chunk does give us a lot of total levels but it doesn't give us quite enough to get to 1500 so we're talking uh what an additional 50 or so hunter levels a couple fletching levels and a handful of cooking levels so we're talking something like we'll be about 1390 1400 total by the end of this which is uh which is quite wild um but i would say it's time to head over there and go to pure in fact hang on just a good spot can i diagonal walk from varrock into there because if i can that would be big <laughs> that would be a lot better as a way to get there than to get in from the south from ferris enclave right let's uh let's bowl over to uh let's bowl over there and see what we can do okay so we are in varrock and i spotted something quite nicely on the chunk picker which is going to make this chunk at least slightly better which is i believe that i can uh that I can go diagonally into this next chunk. So the chunk that we have unlocked is the Grand Exchange. Rough. Very rough. Um, but there we go. It is unlocked and we can step diagonally. Massive. Um, and we can now go into the Grand Exchange. So this is a bank for us, which isn't too bad. We could also do... Um, some interesting stuff with like noting herbs and noting potions and stuff like decanting potions here which is quite cool uh spirit tree's not really relevant to me that so i don't think i can go to kelder Grim, can i let's just double check that imagine if i can go to kelder Grim from here and i'd have naughty smithing 99 yeah you must visit kelder Grim before you're allowed to visit the minecarts that is sad uh we can use this shortcut to get in here Oh, I'm so upset that I was one chunk away. I was one chunk away, like next to uh, Barrows and Edgeville, which were the two chunks that I wanted the most. Oh, that's so sad, but, you know, could be worse. Could be worse. This is still all right. This is an all right little chunk, I think. Okay, so we've found our first crop circle, and we're going to be entering our home for the next very long time. Oh, this is not going to be cool. Uh Oh, so I can push through faster for 30 minutes. That's interesting. Right. So how do I get So I got the uh the the uh, music track Impetuous. Very cool. Trade with Elnock. Okay, so that's how you get the jars and such. Uh talk to Elnock. I think he's the guy that's going to give me the butterfly net. Uh, what is this place? Your Piero, very cool. Can I catch these implings then? I would encourage it. Uh, so what's this equipment you can give me then? Yes, come on, give me some, give me some equipment, boy. You have some spare equipment. Yes, he does. Okay, cool. How do you get the magical butterfly net? Is that one of his rewards? Yeah. Okay, cool. I think I'll need a higher hunter level for that. So, um, can I swap the left click on these things so it's pushed through? Or is that actually really annoying? That's probably really annoying, isn't it? Um, right. So I can wield the butterfly net. And what what implants can I ha catch, actually? With 33, I can probably actually catch... Earth. Oh, I can get essence already. I can get essence simply already. We're balling. Right. So I, I'm guessing getting from four, uh, from 33 to what is it for? Oh no, I can't do essence simply. Sorry, I'm very dumb. Okay, I can do gourmet implings already. Uh, so I'm guessing getting from 33 to 50 is going to be like by far the most annoying part, and then after that it won't be too bad. Okay, cool. Um. 
Why won't it let me push through? Okay, it will. Right. Let's just uh, let's just go in and have a look, shall we? Uh, okay, this isn't too bad. This isn't too bad. We can do this. I mean, look, I'm getting like 6,900 XP per hour, and I'm like just dicking around. Okay, this isn't too bad. We can totally do this. Can he do black salamanders? No, I need a small fishing net, which is an issue. Unless I can, like, telegrab it <laughs> from a chunk that I do have. Do I have a chunk that I could telegrab the small fishing... Oh, if I had, like, if I had, like, this chunk, I probably could telegrab that fishing net. Or this... Oh, that's so rough. Right, time to, uh, get on... Time to get on Twitter and, uh, blag a, uh... Time to get on Twitter and just blag a small fishing net in my chunks like, uh, Settled did, right? That's probably the play. And with this impling here, that is the first hunter level that I'm getting inside Puro Puro. First of many. I'm sure the first ones will feel very quick. And then after that, it will probably feel very miserable. Uh, so I think basically what I need to do is like figure out what I'm going to do regards like left, like setting up custom left clicks and things like that. Um, because I think with some custom left clicks, this won't be too bad. Oh, and there is a silver bar. We spent a long time trying to get a silver bar from Baby Implings and a lot of money. And uh, luckily for us, luckily for us, we can now get them with ease. Well, relative ease. I mean, they're still one in a hundred, so they're not great. Flax. Can I use flax? I don't think I can use flax, can I? And there is level 35 hunter. I think it's level 36 hunter that I need for my next impling unlock. Uh, it would be good if I could catch this young impling, right? Because once I catch that, I can actually check. Uh, so this is why we're catching baby implings instead of young implings, because I just actually catch them as opposed to a young impling which decided it hates me. Um, right, let's have a look at the skill guide. Check to see what level our... Uh, our first impling comes in at. Uh, yes, 36 for earth impling. So that would be cool. Oh, there we go. We just got a bowstring from young implings. I guess now fletching in that regard will be a lot better. Um, because I will actually be able to make quite a lot of bows with uh, with bowstrings now. If I want to. like If I want to use like the magic short bow at Revenants or something like that. I can certainly get them a lot easier now. So that is rather exciting. And there is level 36 Hunter, which is, the, which is the level for Earth Implings. I'm not entirely sure if this plugin that I've got on is automatically going to put their names over their head. But uh, I'll check out the uh, Earth Impling drop table at some point and decide if they are worth doing for anything. Uh, maybe if there's some static spawns, uh, they might be worth going for. So we ran a little sweepstakes on what the trunk roll was going to be, the very first one. Obviously the very first chunk that we got was Goblin Village. Uh, these are the fellas that are in for a chance of winning. Group Iron Man King T, OJ Mill, Fake, Bebop, Astral Teacup, Sleeper Bix and Data. So uh, good luck to those guys. The, price is, uh, the prize is either 40 or 70 mil. I can't actually remember. So uh, hopefully one of them wins. Uh, well, one of them will win. Uh, who is it going to be? And it's our boy, OJ Mill. Exciting stuff. Congrats to him. We will sort out your prize shortly. And look at them. They're just such good guys. We're like, and probably like an hour, an hour and a half after we rolled the chunk. And who's still here? But bouncer gang, <laughs> and instead of uh, fighting PKers for me, they're here uh, patrolling the imp. So if the imp goes over there, they're grabbing it for me so that it respawns over here. They are such legends, honestly. Such a diverse group of fellows. So they uh, they can PK and <laughs> they can catch implings, <laughs> legends. And we are just in the middle of doing our first uh, one of these little fellas um, in the new chunk. We're inside Pura Pura at the minute, and I've got no idea if it's going to spit me back in, spit me back outside. It does spit me back in. That's very exciting. Uh, and we have got ourselves a little book of knowledge, which we will use on Slayer still. 
Very tempting to use it on Hunter to speed this grind up even just a little bit, but we will stick to Slayer for now. And there is 39 Hunter. Uh, one level away from level 40. I think I can get a Magic Butterfly Net when I hit level 42 and can get Essence in Blink. So getting that will be good because it will increase my catch rate quite a lot. Uh, so that is handy. Uh, but you know what? These early Hunter levels are going quite quickly. 8, 8k XP per hour, which is about what I'm getting at the moment, is actually relatively a lot for such a low level. Uh, it's, the issue is, is that it doesn't scale very well, so the XP per hour really isn't going to go up that much. Um, but obviously the XP per level is going to go up massively. So I'm anticipating this being a long grind, but I definitely could have got longer grind, so I'm not too beat up about it. Uh, it's distinct. I would like to apologize. <laughs> really? Apologize for not killing you more? <laughs> As if he's here. That's so funny. <laughs> that is very funny. So alright, distinct. It's all uh it's all fair game in the wilderness. And with this next impling, we hit our first milestone level, level 40 hunter. Nothing that we can actually do with that, seeing as we can't do any traditional hunting right now. But it does put us closer, and all of these uh, hunter levels are going to just get drastically further apart because the XP between levels is going to go up massively, and the XP per hour is not going to be going up massively. So, uh, yeah, the next big milestone will be 42 for the Essence Simpling, so I'll be able to get the magic, uh, magic Butterfly Net, which should increase my rate of catch. And then after that, it'll be Eclectic Implings at level 50, uh, which is probably where we're going to do the bulk of our XP. As if we just got two silver bars from the two baby Implings that were in our invent. <laughs> they cost me 400 mil each when we were right at the start of this account. Oh my god, two out of two. That's like a one in 10,000 chance. That's wild. So they recently updated the, um, the chunk, uh, not the chunk, sorry. God, I've got chunk in my mind. Chunk on the brain. Uh, they recently updated the frog random, uh, so that, um, so that, each one of these frog tokens is actually an XP lamp. And unlike most chunk men, I can actually trade them in at Thessalia in uh, Varrock. So that is essentially a lamp next time I go to Varrock. That's pretty cool. And with this impling, we hit our next milestone, level 42, which is the level for essence implings, which also allows us to get a magic butterfly net, which will help us out quite a bit. I've already prepped the earth implings and the gourmet implings that I need. I just need to now get an essence impling. Okay, here is our essence impling. Hopefully we can catch it before it runs away. Looks like our catch rate on it is terrible, but there it is. And it's also a medium task. Very cool. Right. So that's that. Basically, next time I go over to uh, the guy to refill my uh, refill my jars, I'll be able to grab myself a magic butterfly net, which should increase my uh, XP by, like, a lot, apparently. Apparently, it's, like, 10% or something. Not bad. So I believe now I should be able to get and equip a magic butterfly net. So let's grab one of those. Very nice. Let's wield that. Looks a lot better, doesn't it? That one, this one looks terrible. Not cool. You. And the boys she told you not to worry about. Uh, right, let's also, let's drop that then. Screw that, we don't need you. And we'll just cash in, get all our jars. And let's go again. Oh my fuck! Cosmic runes! Cosmic runes! Yes, I've been struggling for a source of those for so long. Essence Simplings drop Cosmic Runes. Yes! That makes Mage Training Arena so much more doable. When, you know, if and when we get it. Oh, that's huge, actually. That's very big. I totally forgot Essence Simplings were a thing. Oh, that is very handy. Oh my god, noted emeralds as well. That, again, massive for the eventual f uh, ring crafting grind one day. Because I'm almost certain that we will get um, 
we will get the fire altar before we unlock runecrafting. And the emeralds, that's 16 teleports to the fire altar right there. That's crazy. Oh, no! Oh, no! <laughs> I got the chef's delight and immediately clicked it. Oh, well, there's my cooking boost. Confirmation that we can get the plus five cooking boost. Ah, oh, disaster. <laughs> so, we have repurposed Bouncer Gang a little bit. And they are now on duty luring Implings. I don't feel bad about this. Everyone that has done this grind thus far has used an alternative account or multiple to lure... Um, to lure Impling, so I'm not feeling too bad. We're currently level 43, and we're getting 15 and a half KXP per hour, which is an insane amount uh, for, well, for Pura Puro, right? Um, so, yeah, with this, I think we could, with the boys here, with Bouncer Gang, now Lure Gang, um, helping out, I think we can get some seriously good xp per hour once we get into the higher levels obviously level 43 my catch rate is very very low but once we kind of get into those like 70s and 80s where the catch rate's a lot higher i think we could be in a good spot and there is level 44 we are rapidly going through these levels at the minute i'm sure that feeling will end and these will become you know multi-day levels sooner rather than later but as it is at the moment we're flying through it Oh yes, right. We got a we got a second chef's delight, and even though I very nearly clicked on it, I didn't. So uh, I will keep hold of that one. Uh, Cosmic rune stack is getting quite juicy already. So considering we're only forty four hunter, that's not too bad. Um, the rest of it is uh, all right. I think I might ditch the emeralds to be honest. Like I'm not getting enough of them to make it worth holding them. I don't think, which is a shame. But oh well. Uh, we'll keep the chefs to light though, because that'll be handy. So I'll ditch those emeralds. And uh, yeah, onwards and upwards. Enjoying this grind so much so far. And we just got level 45 hunter. Still getting 14.3 KXP per hour. Very, very, very solid. Uh, five more levels until we get eclectic implings. And that is going to be hopefully where everything changes. Well, I've never seen an Impling get into this bit before. <laughs> I've literally never seen that happen. What? Is that even, like, possible? Is that like an, an outworld Impling that somehow come through? That was weird. And there is our first Hunter level of the day. It is technically day two of uh, the hunter grind we're having quite a good time at the moment again 16 kxp per hour i don't think that's too bad for level 47 to be honest um we i've got the chef's delight that i needed which is like probably one of the main items that i need to get at the moment uh there's not too many other important items until i unlock like eclectics and natures and this kind of thing uh but as we are we're doing all right uh the xp per hour is not as bad as i thought it would be um, mostly down to uh, Bouncer Gang being a bunch of fucking legends. But yeah, we're, we're, we're getting on with it, and I'm not finding it too awful at the moment. Ah, oh, the path through the wilting wheat there. That was very nice, the way that I, like, pathed through it to get that earth in bling when it was still visibly up. That was great. And there is level 49 Hunter. Just one more level to the big one. And the big one is getting 50 for Eclectic Implings. Because Eclectic Implings are going to be going to form very likely the bulk of the Implings that we're going to catch to get up to level, uh, to level 89. Okay, and with the next Impling, which will hopefully be this one, there is level 50 Hunter, which is the level for Eclectic Implings that is pretty massive uh, because they are going to be by far the most core impling that we get. Uh, and look, we're we're over halfway to level ninety nine already, so this should hopefully be quite a quick grind. Only one or two more days to go. Uh, next impling after that is fifty eight for nature implings, and they will be quite handy in the long run for farming.
All I'm trying to do right now is get some oak planks so that I can start my stack of oak planks. And instead of getting the 1 in 10 oak planks, I have instead got the 1 in 100 watermelon seeds twice. So, uh, yeah, that's just a representation of the kind of RNG that I have. Hopefully we can get those oak planks from this one. No, we never get oak planks. Right, so this is, these are the items that at the moment we're going to try and keep hold of, which is cosmic runes from the essence implings, and then watermelon seeds and oak planks and the eclectics. I think that's the best. Uh, things like the gold bars noted might seem like something to try and keep hold of, but I just really don't think that they're that useful to me, particularly with the fact that I've got 127,000 gold ore in the bank. Uh, we currently have about five helpers at Implings, which is mental. And we're getting 21,000 XP per hour uh, at level 50 Hunter. And that's only going to go up. So if I can keep this level of Bouncer Gang help the whole time, this grind will really not be that bad. Uh, and it's also just a lot more fun because having to self-ult this, which is what uh, I know Verf did using his own ult with Dark Lure, um made him really really hate the game so not hating the game is probably going to be the most important thing for actually getting this done and getting it done in a timely fashion and there is level 51 hunter and 1350 total that's kind of crazy loving the eclectic implings decided i'm going to keep the adior as well just because if i like, i'm going to catch a lot of implings and having that Adior might be very useful if I get a kind of smithing grind soon. So, yeah, I feel like keeping that is probably a good idea. I don't know if these drop coal. I don't know if they do noted. Uh, but I think the nature implings uh, are going to drop quite a bit of stuff that I would like to keep as well. Uh, what is quite handy, though, is even though I rolled Pura Pura, I probably rolled the best Pura Pura chunk out of the three that I had available because the Grand Exchange Bank is actually really, really close by, which is actually very handy for me because it means that I can uh, I can bank any loot that I get in future. Like when I start getting loot from like Ninja Implings, for example, that I want to keep because it's got high value, but it isn't stackable, then I'll, have, I'll be in a better spot to actually do that. Oh, and there is one of our... I think that might be the first task that I've actually done in the chunk. Red spiky van braces. They are a best in slot for us. Uh, so I will be... Uh, I'll be using those in future. Um, don't know what they're best in slot for. <laughs> because I've got black dehyde van braces. But I know the red dehyde van braces are a best in slot for something. And there is level 52 Hunter, rapidly getting through it. Down at about 18k XP per hour now. Not too bad, though. Could definitely be worse. Uh, looking out for level 58 for the nature in playing. That is going to be the good one. Okay, so we just got our first clue from uh, Eclectic Implink since we got back. Let's give it a drop and see, uh, see if, we, uh, if it's one we need. It is not. <laughs> Sad times. And there is level 54 Hunter rattling through it. 19k XP per hour at the moment, though it won't stay that high if I keep uh, running off to the to the west like that. Uh, but yeah, we're getting there. Four levels to go until level 58, and then we can finally get our jar generator, which will definitely change things for the better. So, there is a very handy plugin called Clue Details that you can get on the plugin hub. And what this allows you to do is mark clues that you can do before ever receiving them. So, this medium clue here, talk to Arava in the Canifis Tavern. Obviously, that's in Canifis, so I can do it. If I drop it, it looks like nothing. But if I mark speak to Arava in this clue plugin, it highlights on the ground. If it was one that's not highlighted, then I wouldn't be able to get it. So what that means, though, is that I can essentially know what plugin, what clues I can do before even reading them. So basically, I'll just get the clues, drop them, and if it's one that I can do, I can grab it and move it and uh, do it. So I'll just quickly mark all the ones that I can do, and then hopefully we'll be able to make this clue juggling malarkey a lot, lot easier. Oh, so there we go. For the first time, it happened. That is a clue that I can do, apparently. So let's have a read of it. Speak to Arava. So it's exactly the same as the one that we've got over here. 
That's quite exciting. Right, let's chuck this one over here. So now we've got two that we're juggling. We need to get up to five for medium clues. Uh, I reckon I should be able to get about one per day, maybe like one every five hours, depending how many I get. But yeah, solid. Oh, yes. And there is our third clue step. step. Let's take a little look at it. Uh, yeah, that's the one in Mortmire Swamp, I believe. Good stuff. Right, let's, uh, let's grab that one. That is our third one. We just need two more, and then we can just, like, guarantee do a medium clue. Oh, my God. We just got another one, like, back to back. So we got, like, four. They were, like, two minutes apart. Less, because, look, that's, well, yeah, two minutes. There we go. Okay, right. Here we go. Let's take a look at this one. Take medium clue. Nope, take it. Oh, God, I've got everything set to not the right ones. Inside Fenkenstrange's castle. Yeah, that is just straight up another one that we can do. Right, one more clue step, and we'll be able to... Uh, we'll be able to get a medium clue done. That is exciting. That is very exciting. Oh! Right, I believe that is our fifth clue. Let's have a read. West of Mortmire Swamp, BKR. Yep. There we go. In fact, yeah, oh, wait. Sorry. Yes, there. Okay. Right. There we go. We've got our fifth clue. That's exciting. That's, uh... Ooh, that's very exciting. First medium clue on the account. So, here is our army of five clues. I believe I should be able to do them all if I've marked the steps correctly. So, we've got this little Mortmire one, which could not be further away. <laughs> oh, that's good. Uh, so, we've got that one. We've got uh, this one. Speak to Rover in the Canifist Tavern. So, that one's actually relatively close. I believe I've got two of that one. I think this is one of those as well. Yep, so that one's e those two are easy. We then got this one, which I don't know what it is. Uh, this one's west of Mortmire Swamp, which is that one. So that one's pretty easy as well. And then the last one is the one that I believe we just looked at. Which oh no, this is the Fenkenstrange Castle one. So that one's pretty easy as well. Oh, that's very exciting. Right, so what first thing I'm going to do is move all these to Varrock, and then from Varrock, I'm going to be able to do them quite easily. So, we'll just grab the first one and head over to Varrock. Okay, so with this clue, we have officially moved them all to Varrock, which is handy for me. Uh, so, what I'll do now is just start taking them over to Canifis. Uh, which one's this? So this one's a Fenkenstrange Castle one. So I will do this step, teleport back to Varrock, drop it to the north so I know that it's one that I've done, and then rinse and repeat, basically. Oh, this is quite exciting. Just uh, doing clues for the first time ever. So I believe what I need to do is dig, get my new clue, read this one, see if it's anything I can do. I cannot. So I'll take this one back to Varrock and uh, just leave it over to the north over here. Um, and then move on to the next one. Ooh! And our first clue casket is a three-stepper. So we've still got two, two clues to, uh, to work on. Uh, so we can basically hopefully get our uh, second clue at some point today. Um... Nothing of interest over there. This could not be much closer to the chunk border, though, could it? Um, so what I'm going to do is... I wanted to open it in Canifis, but I'm quite a long way from there. So I will teleport in to, um, to Varrock. Uh, we've got uh, two clues that we can't do over there, so we'll just let those despawn over time. But here are two other ones. So we will actually keep an eye on these ones. And possibly take those back into Puro with us, so it's probably a bit dumb to move them in the first place. But... Let's... Uh, Let's open this first casket, shall we? See what we can get. This is the first clue casket on the entire account. In terms of things that we're looking for, uh, the obvious ones are the various boots. I think I'd probably rank them spiked manacles the best, um, holy sandals second, and ranger boots third. 
Um, any of the cloaks would be good because that'd be a best in slot cape. Any of the stoles would be very good because that would be a best in slot prayer amulet. And then like kind of any of the like robes or like the mitres and the prayer gear would just generally be quite useful for me. Uh, a lot of good fashion scape I could probably get from this as well, considering my fashion scape is so limited. I'm wearing an Earth tiara right now. And then the Amulet of Strength T or the Amulet of Power are probably the other things that we're looking for that could be good. Other than that, not much that's going to be too useful for us. But hopefully, we can get something good in this first medium casket. Let's go. <laughs> first medium clue and we got sod all of any use to us at all uh addy plate legs i guess are new i can't get those i can only get steel rune or dragon so they're kind of new uh but we will be adding the shazian banner to our collection looks all right i guess even though i can't use it because i need to have this equipped but onwards and upwards right Okay, with this final impling, there is level 58 Hunter. And level 58 Hunter means nature implings are on the card. So what we're going to do is go into the impling, uh, the impling plugin, which you guys cannot see. But what I'm going to do is highlight nature implings. So we should see them around relatively rarely. But they shouldn't be too bad. Well, there's one just there, right? So hopefully we can, uh, we can catch this first one. Uh, looks like one of the boys has got it for me. I need to swap the left click on that to catch. And then I need to try and get it. Can we get it? Yes, there is the first one. So the nature and blings are so big for us because they drop some good stuff. But also, crucially, they let me get a jar generator. So what I need is three essence implings, two eclectic implings, and one nature impling, And I can get a jar generator, which basically means that I can... Uh, bring far more jars with me into the maze and go back to Elnock way less often. Okay, so we are at Elnock. We have the requisite stuff, I believe. So we should be able to buy ourselves a jar generator now, which is very handy because essentially what that gives us is the ability to just grab impling jars out of here. Um, I will... I won't trade those in, actually. I will open those. And I got the two torstals. Oh my god, that is like the one thing I wanted from um, from those implings. Because what they give me is the ability to trade them in for one stamina potion. If I ever unlock construction, i.e. basically from this chunk here with the estate agent, I'll be able to make the pools of restoration. And having 10 staminas from being able to trade in torstals will be absolutely massive uh, because i'd be able to make the run regeneration pool which would just be huge for me so uh that is actually quite hilarious because that's a one in 100 from a nature impling and that is the first nature impling that i've dropped but here we go with the jar generator look at that exciting times what the fuck five avant why did i just get five avanto seeds what the hell is that from is that a nature impling drop Oh my god, it is. Yeah, 1 in 100 nature trimming drop is 5 Avanto seeds. What? That's a bit of a bizarre one. <laughs> Alright, I guess I'll take that to the bank alongside the uh, Torstal seed then. 1 in 100 is a bit annoying. If it was like 1 in 10, that'd be unbelievable. But I guess I'll, uh, I'll take it to the bank anyway. That's so good. Wow. Oh, and there is our fourth medium clue step. Things you love to see. Let's have a little look. Northwest of the exam center on the hill. Can I definitely do that one? Nice. And that's a good one because that's actually relatively close to me. Uh, close to like the Varrock teleport. Nice. You'd love to see that. Right. I will uh, come back for this one. And then we just need to get one more and we can get our second clue done. And there is 59 Hunter. First level with natures. We got a decent amount of them. Uh, got the torstals, which I wanted, obviously. I've, I've decided that I'm going to collect the irrit seeds. Having the jar generator has been really, really game changing because it's mean that I can, it's meant that I can, like, have less jars in the invent at any one time and therefore I can save more stuff. So I've decided to add law runes, nature runes, and irrit seeds to the list of items that I'm gonna get. Let me know in the comments down below if you think there are any better items that I should be collecting in the long run. 
Uh, these are the ones that I think are the best based on the drop rate crossed with what they actually are and the quantity. Um, but yeah, let me know if you think of anything better than Lost Natures and Irrit Seeds. Yes! Yes, we got a clue! I can do. Yes, 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 yes. Let's have a look at that one. Just double check it. Inside Frankenstrainer's Castle. Yeah, that's one of the ones I can do. Nice. Things you love to see. That is five. Three there, one there, one in the invent. Perfect. Right, let's go do our second medium clue. Right, we've already done three steps of this clue. Surely we're going to get the fourth step here and now. Go on. Yes, there we go. And this time we do get to open the casket in Canifis, where it all started. Let's do it. Okay, right, come on. Second casket. I'm feeling that I'm going to get one of the cloaks. Uh, I'm in Canifis, so the cape shop is over there. So I feel like it is the time to get one of the cloaks. Three, two, one, let's go. Bang. Oh, we got a whole load of collection log slots, but nothing that's actually too useful for us. Uh, brown headband, elegant shirt, and an armadillo page. I will probably, shall I wear the elegant shirt? That feels like something that I could stick on, no? Uh, oh, look at me, I'm so bloody fancy. I've gone straight from absolute scrub to the world's fanciest fancy man. Uh, I will wear that, why not? Uh, and I will stick on the headband as well. I mean, that looks awful. That looks awful. It's not, there's not even like any, oh, there is a slight amount of texture to that. I thought it was actually just painted on to the skull for a second. Uh, I may stick with a tiara, actually. <laughs> the brown headband is awful looking. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this one year anniversary special of Cannabis Chunk. I hope you enjoyed the video. The next several weeks will be a tough grind, but I will get through them unscathed. If you made it this far through the video, please subscribe. My entire self-esteem relies upon number go up. As always, a massive thank you to the channel members, Fontcest, Taufane, Patrick Wright, Jean Scallon, Mike Moran, and Fuchless at the Amethyst tier, Crito, Cianscape, Cornstalk Hands, Mr. Flappo, and Pretty Cool Guy 1 at the Rune tier, Elpinen, Come Crumpet, Teeters, Ubahasu, Memecoin, Baseman, Alacy, Draco Ranger, Pierre Totari, Just Taxland, Can't Even Fly, and Tazar Doug at the Legend tier, and as always at the Gold tier, Eddie Mayer, Shocked Thief, Salnixor, Kai, Carl Sprouse, Papa Brando, Squang, Oliver, Hazmat83, Nilo360, Croporo, Vandio Gaming, Asheranka, Carsman, Spooky Pasta, Hannibal, Potatis, Wimble, Chasjon, Only Moly, Ed Manta, Sauron Pedersen, Morseco, Pants Pooper, King Duffy, Loon Master Flex, Big Fuzzy Hat, Cummy Pancakes, Tom Van Ramshort, and Nicholas Stringer. Thank you so much for watching. And as a reminder, please check out Pocket Champs at the link down below. It supports my channel and it's a really great game. Thank you.